Hi, welcome to uh, the Town of Clark Sound's Memorial Day Tribute. Uh, we're going to begin our ceremony today. Uh, so on behalf of uh, the Town of Clark Sound, we want to thank you and welcome you here. So again, what I'd like to do is start out where our flag ceremony will be held by the uh, Korean War Veterans Association and our colors, our uh, color guard will be presented by the United States Marine Corps League. The Pledge of Allegiance today will be held, read, uh, sung by Joe Tarantella. Oh, I'm sorry, Pledge. Uh, please, at this time, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. We will face the flag. Clark 
Youngstown Memorial, Justin Sweet. I'm going to invite Timothy Yang back up to sing God Bless the USA.
plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA. Well, there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say that I'm proud to be an American. including three meritorious service medals, four Army Accommodation Medals, two Army Achievement Medals, the Expert Field Medical Badge, the Iraqi Campaign Medal, and the Global War on Terror Service. It's my honor and privilege to welcome Colonel Angela Woods. One million, 
given their lives in service of our country. And at this moment in time, 1,358,193 are currently serving in our armed forces, which is 1% of our population. So what does this mean? Right now, at this moment, more people have died in service of our country than are actually in our military across our nation right now. So it's important we take this time to reflect on this and to honor those who have made the final sacrifice, all 1,361,508. So every Memorial Day, I think about those that have made that final sacrifice. Some of my friends in Iraq that died serving next to me. And I often wonder, what would they say to me today on this Memorial Day? What would they want me to know? What would they want their friends and family members to know? And I, I think about their moments as they uh, started their career. You know, there's, there's a moments we all have, for those of you that have served in the military, the first moment is when you make that decision for the first time. You're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go into the military. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve my country. You make that decision. That's one moment. And then the next moment is when you have that realization that, oh, no, this means that I've just given up my entire life for the military. And that's usually that moment when that drill sergeant is in your face about 4.30 in the morning screaming and yelling and getting you out of bed and you're doing push-ups. You realize, yeah. This is the moment that I've uh, given up my life, right? And then the next moment comes when you get those orders to deploy. To deploy and go overseas to fight for our country, to fight for the freedoms that we have here today. Democracy, freedom of speech, freedom to enjoy the weekend. On a, on a great May like this. And then it's that moment that you take a second and you say, yeah, you know what, this could be it. This could be that I don't come back. And then you rock up and you go do your duty happily because you've been trained and this is what you've signed up to do. And then while you're deployed, there's that moment been given the mission, and you're getting in the vehicle. You're preparing to go out and face an enemy that's trying to kill you. And at that moment, I think the most soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, airmen and women, they have that moment where they make peace with God. They realize that God's in control and their training is going to carry them through. But that's a moment. And sometimes they're fleeting. Sometimes they're longer. But it's their moment. So that next moment after that, they move out smartly, and they go, and they go face that enemy bravely. So this minute, right here, this moment, I want to take a moment for them, and just a moment of silence to recognize all those sacrifices, those that are not here with us because of those sacrifices, and also the sacrifices of their family members and their friends and the community that has lost them. So if you'll join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. So I, as I was saying before, I always think about on Memorial Day, what would they say to us right now? And I can tell you that 
even as a soldier, what I would have said. I would say, this is your moment. This is your moment. We're still here. And they fought so that we could be here right now in this moment. So we should live every one of those moments. Stop holding super grudges. Forgive each other. Let it go. Get over it. It's not worth worrying about. I think they would say to us, you know, do the things that make you happy. Stop doing the things that make you miserable. I think they would say, love each other more and truly care about each other. Despite what a person looks like, where they come from, I think they would say, lay down your criticisms and your hatred and just care about each other. Because we can always learn from each other and we can always help each other. Be curious. I think they would tell us, take an interest in each other and start to understand each other better. I think they would say, stop trying to control everything and just relax and enjoy this moment. I think that they would also tell us this weekend, go out and enjoy the weekend, enjoy nature, enjoy the sun, enjoy your family, enjoy the food, taste it all. So, as we uh, leave here today, I want to just leave you with this one last thing. Our soldiers have, and, and sailors and Marines and airmen and women have gone out bravely in their moments, right? to do the things outside of their comfort zone. So I challenge us today to do the same. Go out bravely. Go outside your comfort zone. Do something that's going to have a positive impact on people. Forgive each other. Be curious. Like our brave soldiers, sailors, airmen, and women that have faced these challenges, run towards your fear. Face it. Conquer it. Like they have. I think that's their message to us. You know, whether it's embarking on a new adventure, starting a new business, every one of us are here for a reason. And we need to keep moving forward. Start something new. Try something different. Defeat the things that are in your way. Volunteer. And may I say for, for those of you that can still, uh, join the 1%. Join our forces. Don't let the 1 million 361,508 soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, and women who were just like you, sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, friends. Uh, don't let them have died in vain. Go out and live your moment at Thank you. Another round of applause for Colonel Wood. Thank you so much. Uh, great message, Colonel Woods, and also I wanted to remind everyone that uh, Colonel Woods was also uh, the recipient of the Rockland County Freedom Award uh, this year. So congratulations on that for this past year. More importantly, thank you for your 28 years plus of service to our country and uh, a powerful message you shared with us. So thank you. I'd like to now invite up Elaine Alphabon, Superintendent of Recreation and Parks. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our Memorial Day ceremony. I would like to give thanks to Michelle Green and the whole uh, Memorial Day committee for all their hard work and dedication and how beautiful you'll see how the inside is decorated and outside. So kudos to Michelle and your full, full committee. I'd also like to thank all the grounds people that put in an effort to make the outside look so beautiful. I think it hasn't looked this great in many, many years. So thank you, Donnie and John and, and Brian and Dennis Letson and Ronnie for all your hard work from the outside grounds. Also to our community center staff custodians, John and Harvey, for their continued contributions. When you go inside, it's been a challenging year with all the construction, and um, you'll be able to get a peek today. And I'd like to give a shout out to Montana Construction, who was with us today, who did the construction on this new phase that you're going to get a chance to see today. As you all heard, twice already joining us today as a special guest is Timothy Yang, a sixth grader at Felix Festa Middle School, Middle School, and just a 
Thank you for entertaining us with your fabulous voice, and we look forward to hearing you one more song. Today is not only about planning for weekend barbecues. Today is about remembering those who served, those who died, those who fought to give us freedoms and the liberties we have each day. We live in the land of the free because of these men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice. It is important not only to recognize their service, but to respect their devotion to duty and ensure the purpose for which they fought will never be forgotten. Remembering those who have sacrificed so much for our country and making sure our youth are educated and understand the true meaning of why we are here today. I would now like to introduce the members who joined us today from our Parks, Warren and Recreation Commission, our Chairman Brian Tessiman, and our Vice Chairman Scott Miller. It is my pleasure to introduce Clark Sound Town Supervisor George Holman. Good morning. I just uh, want to recognize a few folks that uh, have taken the time to join us this morning. Rockland County Executive Ed Day. Clark Town Town Councilman Pat Carroll. The uh, Director of the Veterans Affairs Office in uh, Rockland County, Susan Brown. New York State Assemblyman Ken Zabrowski. Clarkstown uh, Police Captain uh, Jeff Wanamaker. <laughs> Representing uh, Congresswoman Nita Lowy, Jesse Malewitz. Clarkstown Town Justice Howard Gerber. Clarkstown Town Justice David Asher. Rockland County Legislator Lon Hofstein. Clarkstown Town Justice Judge Scott Ugell. You see uh, Rich Willow is the uh, Deputy uh, Fire uh, Chief from uh, New City Fire Department. Thank you, Rich, for being here. And also uh, Fire Commissioner from the Congress Fire Department, Michael Graziano. Thank you, Michael. Now, I've been at the uh, Street Community Center quite often over the past few weeks. Uh, checking, checking on the progress of the second phase of renovations. And while spending time here the past number of weeks, I've walked through the promenade of the Bureau, stopping at the memorials for each of the wars our country has fought. As I've done this, I've had the occasion to think about all of those who we have lost over the years. I think about the bravery of the young soldiers who died for our country. I think about how often I've asked myself, who were these gallant men? American soldiers who willingly sacrificed their lives. So with the help of Brian Jennings and his assistant Joseph Barbieri of the New City Library, we did a little research on some of these real-life American heroes. Soldiers from our time, our town, who died in combat. Let me tell you briefly about four Parkstown heroes. Private First Class Eugene J. Nagel, Corporal John Layden, Corporal Robert A. Brown, and Master Sergeant Walter Hayes. Private Eugene Nagel of Danuet was just 17 when he enlisted in the Army. The Rockland County leader, the Spring Valley based newspaper, August 17, 1944 edition, has a brief notice and a photo of Private Nagel on the front page under the caption. His life in action. Followed by the headline, Young Nanuit Soldier Reported Killed in Action. War Department Reports Death in Action of a Private First Class Eugene Nagel. The short news brief reads as follows. BFC Eugene J. Nagel, son of Mr. and Mrs. Joseph T. Nagel of Church Street, Nanuit, was killed in action in Italy on July 16th. The 19-year-old Nanuit youth was serving an infantry regiment. His parents were notified in the following telegram from the War Department. Quote, the Secretary of War desires me to express his deep regret that your son, PFC Eugene T. Nagel, was killed in action on July 16, 1944 in Italy. Letter to follow. The article concludes, 
Private Nagel has been in the Army for nearly two years and spent several months overseas. He has a brother, Private Joseph Nagel Jr., serving with the United States Army in France. I think about what that family went through, receiving a two-sentence telegram with the horrendous news that their beloved son, all of just age 19, was gone. I wondered about the heartache that they endured and the worry they must have had for the remaining son who was also in combat. I also could not help but wonder how his brother reacted when he learned of the death of his own brother while he himself was still facing the enemy in France. This is what true sacrifice, duty, and honor looks like. A 19-year-old hero who, despite his young age, had nearly two years of combat infantry service. Private Eugene Nagel, gone, but not forgotten. Corporal John Layton lived with his parents on Maple Avenue in Valley Cottage, and according to the news reports, played baseball and hockey in school. When he was in his junior year at Nyack High School, he enlisted in the Army to become a paratrooper. He was just 17. Once in the service, he volunteered to become an Army Ranger, and in October 1950, was sent to Korea. He was in constant action from his arrival shortly before Thanksgiving until March 15, 1951, when he was injured. Corporal Layden received the shrapnel wounds in his head on that day and was immediately brought to an Army field hospital in Busan and operated upon. He was later transferred to a hospital in Japan for further surgery. He recovered from his wounds and he returned to action in early May of 1951. On May 19, 1951, Corporal John Layden was killed in action in Korea. The June 13, 1951 edition of the Journal News has a brief story under the headline, Valley Boy Killed in Korea, May 19th. The article has a photo of a beaming paratrooper in dress uniform and recounts the brief telegram sent to the family signed by Major General William Bergen announcing the death and also offering letter to follow. I wonder what that letter said and more importantly what that Clarkstown family went through that time so long ago when they received the unbearable news that a life so young had been cut so short. The headline of the newspaper referred to Corporal Aiden as a boy, yet he certainly was more than that, having served nearly two years in the Army and much of it in combat. I thought of the anguish felt in that home on Maple Avenue in Valley Cottage, and that tight-knit community that came together to, mo to mourn at the Requiem Mass at St. Paul's in Congress. Corporal John Lee, gone, not forgotten. I was unable to learn much about Corporal Robert A. Brown, other than he died a hero, and suffered a hero's death, according to the newspaper. The July 16, 1951 Journal News article has a photo of Corporal Brown under the headline, Killed in Action. Corporal Brown was raised in Clarkstown. His family lived in Annie during his early years and later moved to Spring Valley. The article offers that Corporal, died, Corporal Brown died a hero's death on September 6, 1950 in Korea when he threw his body in front of a buddy's to shield him from an exploding grenade. The article concluded by saying the dead soldier's body was recently returned to this country and buried in the West New Hempstead Cemetery. I'm struck by what Corporal, Corporal Brown's buddy must have thought and whatever became of him, since Corporal Brown literally traded his life for his friends. I couldn't help but be reminded of the biblical verse from John Gospel, chapter 15, verse 13. No greater love is there than this, than to lay down one's life for a friend. Certainly this is what Corporal Brown did over 68 years ago. Corporal Robert A. Brown, gone, but not forgotten. Finally, Master Sergeant Walter Hayes, brief story from news reports, outlines the true cost of freedom and the suffering that a family faces. 
the Journal News, March 13, 1954 edition, some eight months after the ceasefire that ended the fighting in Korea, recounts the grim news and offers a glimpse into what Master Sergeant Hayes' family endured. The headline simply states, Sergeant missing in action, listed killed. The article goes on to outline in brief the service of Sergeant, Sergeant Walter Hayes through two wars. Sergeant Hayes is married to Rosalind Hayes of Lake Lucille, New City. Sergeant Hayes was serving with the 1st Cavalry Division in Korea when he was reported missing on October 8, 1951. The article continues to offer that this was not the first war Hayes served in. In fact, he was a first lieutenant in World War II serving with the 5th Division in Italy. He was wounded and received a Purple Heart. After his commission had expired and he left the Army, he eventually re-enlisted as a Master Sergeant and served in the United States and in Austria. When the Korean War started, he asked for combat duty and was assigned to Korea. Two wars, multiple combat tours, and after surviving the first war, he willingly steps forward and places himself in harm's way in the second war. Simply remarkable. I also thought about what Sergeant Hayes' wife endured. He was reported missing on October 8, 1951. The ceasefire in Korea ending hostilities took place on July 27, 1953. And the notification to the family of his death occurred in March of 1954. Two and a half years later, can you imagine how those days passed for Rosalind Hayes? Hope, despair, and anguish must have tinged and cascaded over each and every day for that wife and for that family. A wife stuck in limbo, hoping for the best, not really knowing if she was still a wife or actually a widow for over two and a half years. Sacrifice is not just the fallen, but the families who endure the loss. Master Sergeant Walter Hayes, gone but not forgotten. Today we kick off this most solemn and sacred weekend. While not a religious ceremony, make no mistake about it. What we do here today in remembering the fallen is a sacred duty. We are joined by so many veterans and we thank them for their service as American soldiers. But we're not here for the men and women who came home. While we thank them for the love of duty and devotion to country, we are here for the ones who did not come home. We are here for Private First Class Eugene Nagel. We are here for Corporal John Lade. We are here for Corporal Robert A. Brown. We are here for Master Sergeant Walter Hayes. We are here for all the fallen American soldiers who have died in combat in all of America's wars and conflicts so that we might live. Today and throughout the coming weekend, we thank all of our veterans, but we honor and pause to remember those who did not come back, who are frozen forever in time, eternally young. It is our duty never to let them be forgotten. It is our job, the task of the living, to always honor and remember those who died so that liberty and freedom reign in our country. So sleep in peace, brave American soldiers. We will never forget what you have done for us. May God bless and keep our American soldiers. May God continue to bless the United States of America. This time we have a special presentation um, that we ask the uh, family of Doreen Beener to please come forward. His wife Leah and his three children. Now you may have noticed uh, a few months ago that uh, in our Hall of Heroes that was uh, reconstructed last year in our Phase One renovation, that there's a beautiful new uh, mural. Uh, Mr. Beener actually is a uh, world-renowned muralist who uh, now is living in Rockland County donated his services uh, for free to the town so we can accurately uh, and uh, wonderfully de uh, depict and honor our fallen veterans and all of our veterans with the mural in the Hall of Heroes. Mr. Wiener actually is in the Guinness Book of World Records having uh, created the world's 
uh, longest and largest mural, some three and a half mile long mural in Israel. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here uh, today, but on behalf of myself and the Parks and Recreation Commission and the Town Council, as Pat Carr will join us as well, would like to present um, this plaque to uh, Mr. Mayor's family and thank him for his service to Town Park. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 
Thank everyone. This concludes our ceremony for today. I want to thank uh, George Owen, Ed Day, County Executive, uh, the Town Board, Town uh, Parks and Recreations, and more importantly, all the men and women that have given the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, we'll remember them this weekend for what it's for. And uh, thank you for all coming out. And uh, God bless and have a great weekend. There we are, refreshments. And, uh, Food in the side. All right, thank you.